Gurmaigate <laughs> Dar glue agus a cottage dar are planning a a yik din year so ju er son a good jetil nish are tatasa morara umper fragra agus near togu contas at a vage go foil a harlow are a he new udras air for qualiclia as mele job and the ligand hon bali at a la biangalay agus can chakra the horin shamahan shun dun football war now will in realtas able to hint to go will our air force able to find new a gart. Minister, last weekend we witnessed crazy scenes at Dublin Airport. Passengers forced to wait on hours on end outside of the terminal. Over 1,400 people missing flights because of the chaos at the airport. And what we saw last weekend, Minister, was a national embarrassment. It should never have happened. And you're the minister responsible for transport and for aviation. And you haven't been held to account for your role in this. When the Dublin Airport Authority laid off a thousand workers, Jerry Brennan of SIPTU told them, and I quote, you will need to be hiring people because your queues will be extending through the car parks. Well, that's exactly what happened. And your government sanctioned this level of redundancy. So can I ask you, why did you do that? Because everyone knew that aviation would rebound once the pandemic subsided, with pent up demand for international travel, such as it is. Everyone, Minister, except yourself and the DEA. While the DEA are responsible for the operation at the airport, you as Minister are responsible for transport strategy. And we constantly hear about the strategic importance of Dublin Airport, given we live on a small island. A small island where connectivity to Europe and the rest of the world is so vital. A small island economy in which tourism is so important, supporting jobs, supporting businesses, supporting employment. And it is crucially important. We see in 2019 alone 33 million passengers travel through the airport, many of them tourists, business passengers, and people travelling on a well-earned holiday. And Minister, what does it say to these people that your government can't get an international airport to function properly on your watch? What does it say to the tourism sector that relies on Dublin Airport to function properly and provide a service that tourists can depend on? Now, I'm not convinced by what the DAA had to say yesterday. The wait times they are setting out are still far too long. The idea that passengers are going to be triaged and in some type of holding areas is embarrassing, Minister. The fact that the airport plans to function with security staff levels of 70% of pre-pandemic levels is not acceptable. Now, you've been unable to give an insurance that we won't see scenes like we did last weekend. And frankly, you've been asleep at the wheel, Minister. You've been asleep at the wheel right throughout this process, only to appear last weekend. So tell me this. What do you intend to do as Minister, as Minister responsible for transport and aviation strategy, if we see scenes again this weekend like we've seen the chaotic scenes just last weekend? What do you intend to do as Minister for Transport? Can you say that head will roll unless things are put properly at the airport and passengers will have a, a, a speedy access through that airport and not be suffering the indignity and the chaos that we've seen last weekend? Tara. I've been meeting the aviation industry right through this particular COVID period. I met with the board of Aer Lingus, uh, sorry, board of Dublin Airport several months ago, and met the airlines and the airport, indeed all three airports, on a regular basis. And it's been a difficult time. It was very difficult managing through, through COVID, uh, but we've absolutely been focused on what's in the interest of the Irish public and the travelling public to make sure that they are served. They were not served last weekend. And everyone accepts that. And it was totally unacceptable. The mistakes were made on rostering and making sure that there weren't enough people is something that is inexcusable. There's no way you can get around that it, it was, they majorly let down the airport, the workers, everyone there, and the country, the wider country. So that is agreed. We have to rectify it. 
We've been meeting every day, myself and Minister Nocton, with the airport authorities to make sure that they do put plans in place so that it doesn't happen again. And it's not, they can't guarantee that, but we're going to make sure that every single thing is done to avoid it. They have 220 meeting them this morning, told that there's some 225 of the new staff that they have new uh, in place. It'll take another three weeks, about 30 additional a week for, for each of the next three, three weeks as they come out of training. They committed this morning to hire a further and train a further 100 staff to make sure that they've uh, um, room in case of any eventualities so that that doesn't happen again and it can't. And we will do whatever we can in government to support them to avoid that eventuality. They also made a mistake. I think it was in May 2020 when the original decision was made to apply the redundancy scheme. Too many workers were left off. That is clear now. But the critical thing the Irish public want to know is that the additional staff are now put in place so that they can get through the airport without missing a flight and without being in a triage system which requires them to stand outside the concourse. That's only there in case of emergencies. It will be introduced it's starting this weekend, but only on a very small scale basis. But it's in the event, in the event that anyone is restricted from entering that they're not st standing out in wet weather. But we don't, that's not how airports can and should run. Dublin Airport has a long history and is an excellent airport. The staff there and the management have real skills in running airports. And they need to get back to that, and they will get back to that. They can and will do that. And the Irish public not have to wait queue two and a half hours. It's important we put out the message, though, that the public do come in the timelines that have been suggested. This morning it was slightly difficult because, again, a lot of people arrived probably too early. So follow the advice is the first thing we need to do in terms of when to come, and it will be managed. People will get through, I'm com confident, this weekend and through this summer period. And if it doesn't, then we'll have to take further measures. There will be nothing uh, avoided in terms of making sure that Irish passengers don't have that uncertainty, don't have that stress, that huge stress, when you're meant to be going on your holiday to start it with the uncertainty as to whether you make it or not, is the last thing that we can tolerate or accept. Now, the way to do that, we could spend the whole time scoring points or just talking down about uh, people or, or kicking them in the process. The key thing is to make it work. And that's what we, in my mind, the workers and the management in Dublin Airport are committed to doing. It's not just those airports. There's airports right across the world. We see the neighbouring island airports often the same, but that doesn't excuse it. No one's going to make excuses. What we will do is make sure it works and make sure the travelling public are not inconvenienced. That's what they, they expect. Minister, from what you said, you would just swear that this just happened just, you know, out of the blue, just over the last couple of days. You talk about further measures. You talk about that they've committed today to another 100 staff to be employed. Back in March, we had a problem. Back in March, we had a problem. And we would have expected, or the travelling public would have expected, that the minister responsible for transport and aviation, a government who signed off on a, on a redundancy package of 1,000 staff, who's left that airport now at a point where we cannot guarantee that passengers will not miss their flights this weekend. They would have expected that you would have taken a hands-on approach at that point in time. The fact that you're telling us today that they're committing to employ in the future another 100 staff, that shows that you have not been dealing with this issue effectively, that you have been asleep at the wheel. So can I ask you, because assurances were given last week that we wouldn't see the scenes, the chaotic scenes that happened at Dublin Airport, and yet they materialised. So as Minister for Transport, if we see those scenes again, are you going to hold those individuals at DAA accountable? Will they continue to be in their position? And as Minister, can you explain to the Irish public why your government signed off on a redundancy package that was completely and utterly unacceptable, trying to cut too deep and leaving Irish public, the tourism sector, exposed as a result? In March, we realised there was a problem, and we engaged directly with the airport. The airport themselves recognised that there was a problem, and there was a particular problem coming into the Easter period. And we engaged with the company, with the European Commission and others, to try and make sure that the security arrangements in the airport would allow us to get those passengers through, which we did at Easter, not in an, in an ideal situation. No one wants to queue an hour, let alone end the, end the any longer, but people did not miss their flights, and it was managed. It was managed up to last Sunday, 
And yes, no one can excuse what happened last Sunday because that is in, in, intolerable. But to describe the period from March to that period as being inactive is not true. Yes, it was slow and not as many people got through the training programme as quickly as, as had been expected. The airport were the first to admit that in the committee hearings yesterday. But there was no inactivity from anyone. There was no one shirking the actual responsibility. Yeah, at that time. I've met them, I don't know how many dozen times over the last two or three years. Min Minister Nocton on a, on a daily basis with my own advisor and myself coming in on a regular basis to check and make sure what we were doing and engaging with the Taoiseach, the Taunish and others you, to Minister. make sure that whole of government was involved. Margaret, we were active, we were engaged. Thank you. Everyone was let down at the weekend and we, and we would all accept the responsibility for that, myself Margaret. included. But, no, we're over time. We're over time.